Welcome back, Saints fans. Who dat? You're 2 0 to start the season, and we're bringing you back to the Saints film room today to talk about Michael Thomas and how he looks so far, more specifically, how he looked in this game against Carolina. And a few things that I want to focus on is how does he look athletically, like in his stem, into his breaks? You know, how does he look in routes? How does he look at different depths of routes? Is the play speed there? And how are the New Orleans Saints using him? We'll try to cover all those things in this video, give you an idea maybe where he's at now and where maybe he can still grow and be by the end of the season. Just got to hope he stays healthy. But before we do that, reminder, every time we make these videos, they're not enough to build a full-on scouting report. A single article or video you watch isn't enough for that. You have to put in the work. But hopefully this video can give you some ideas and maybe give you a glimpse into what he's doing good or even bad and last but not least if you're sitting out there watching this going hey i love the who Dat nation who doesn't how can you not let me know down below that you're part just say who Dat. is it comment section down below who Dat? and let's go ahead and roll into the film study let's go so first play we're going to take a look at saints fans is actually michael thomas in his first catch of the game here against carolina with a variation of the hank concept looks like now those that have never heard of the Hank concept, it's a staple for going against cover three that you used to see a lot with Sean Payton and Drew Brees and now with Carmichael and Carr. But the basic idea is you want to really stretch and put a burden on the underneath of cover three as they're going to back out there on the outside and drop into their short zones. And depending on how they have their match set up, how they attack curl hook defenders, you're putting them in conflict. So what you're doing here with Thomas is quick little curl slash hitch little out can even be classified as a speed out and same thing on the bottom side so it's a mirrored concept you're going to attack both sides of the field with this now this one usually how you make this read you look for as the quarterback so a little quarterbacking for y'all here as the quarterback what you're going to do is look for the weaker side of this alignment so you're running the same thing on both sides. Like I said, it's a mirrored concept. So pre-snap, you're basically turning this into a half-field read. You're splitting it and saying, hey, my pre-snap says this side is not the side I want. Now, why is that the case? You're going to count the defenders. So if you look over here, we've got one, two. That's it. Then you got your middle guy. It's going to be your mic call out probably. Then you've got the linebacker right here. And then you've got three. So we're stacked heavy if we're the Carolina Panthers down on this side. So you've got one, two, three, and then you've got two. So that means we pre-snap should be okay. We're looking somewhere on this side of the field. So this has nothing to do with Michael Thomas. I just figured maybe you'd enjoy having that little tidbit of information for pre-snap reads. So as we watch this play in its full developing, we'll see Thomas cut underneath Taysom Hill. And that's a great play design in my opinion. I love the draw up there to add a little variety to the spice of the offense. And it's a great throw by Carr because he has to really get past that mid and throw it to a spot. And then fantastic hands by Michael Thomas. So watch one more time in the other angle. Could this have been a little bit closer to Thomas' body? A little bit. Some of this is going to be timing and placement of the wide receiver as well. But it's a great job by Thomas to recognize the zone, sit in it, and then make a fantastic catch. We talk about what traits make Michael Thomas elite. Well, it's always been his hands were his best trait, right? He's great route running, but he always had fantastic hands. Shows it here, sits in that underneath. And you see Carolina was trying to react pretty quickly to something like that. And uh, good design, though, and great use of Michael Thomas in the short yardage area of the game. Let's look up at the next play. Okay, so I said I want to look at various aspects of Michael Thomas. Part of that is I actually want to take a look at how smooth does he look in his breaks. And this is important because this is what creates separation. And specifically, I want to target plays that you can really tell are going to kind of stress that ankle. And I think this is a good one here. This is a deep out, but a 12-yard break, right? And in fact, when we actually run that Hank concept we're talking about, a lot of times the curl is 12 yards deep. But anyway, as you'll come through here, watch him ride at the top of your screen so the idea here, a couple different ways you can attack with an out route. I mean, depending on the wide receiver and the type, they can use rocker steps to really try to sell the inside, then break out, and they can do a speed out, and that's where the goal is to really cut underneath sharply. I think when I look at this one, though, for Thomas, I, I really pinpoint on this ankle. So again, the route here is going to be about 10 yards break, and you're going to try to create separation with the violence of that route break okay 
So as he climbs up, watch now. So you're gonna put the motion that creates the slide right here. Bam. Now the DB, the reason that we talk about speed out as a concept is because DBs will use what's called a speed turn. So what Michael Thomas is gonna to try to do is attack the inside. That's what he's doing here. And then once the DB fully commits, you see he fully commits here. His whole body positioning is going the wrong way. Now you work on the break. And you want to be sharp and sudden. Watch Michael Thomas here. Break really kind of curves into it, right? So that allows the speed turn of the cornerback to put him right back on the hip of Michael Thomas. And Michael Thomas before would not take a three-step rounded. It would be a quick plant explode to the corner. And he was never as quick about it as Chris Olave. But that is something that you know, because you see he doesn't create any separation here. To be very clear, Michael Thomas has never been a wide receiver who creates a ton of separation. That's just never been his game. He usually wins with great route running, technique, hands, and understanding the defense. Michael Thomas has never been the greatest athlete at wide receiver, but he was a great player. So I'm not terribly worried about it, but I do actually want to show it on the screen. Can you talk about creating an opening? Well, look at Keith Kirkwood here at the middle. Keith Kirkwood, who Carr is actually going to work back towards here in this boot pass, does create separation with a same type of play. So his is going to be a little bit more elongated. He's running a crossing pattern here, not an out. So he creates a little bit more separation by the style of the route. He naturally has a little bit more. But even then, you see that cut is a one-cut break. Now, his cut's a hell of a lot easier because he's already coming at an angle, whereas Thomas is having to go from a dead B line and then cut hard at a 90-degree angle. But all that said, that's just something to know from Thomas. Now, he still does a great job of working, bodying out. He's now taking the sideline. I do think they could try to make this pass to Thomas, though Kirkwood also kind of makes sense. Kirkwood technically is the back throw you're throwing across your body can be dangerous but really don't mind the decision but anyway all this was to show you where you see thomas's ankle and i do think it's going to continue to get better the more reps he has we talk about knocking the rust off well this is kind of what we talked about in camp and preseason he's not out there dominating every place some plays it's all there and some plays it's not all there i mean it's like 90 percent, 95 percent, and uh, we'll see how that goes as we progress through this film study okay so another one here, and this one, I love his recognition of the coverage, the speed to get there, and then we do have a quick sudden break. So on that last play, remember how I, I just said 90 to 95% sometimes, and the other plays, it's like, bam, violence, quick, right there, in a spot. That's what you get here. Now that back angle is not a great one, so let me go back to the wide angle here from the sidelines. But one, I love how he recognizes the coverage. This is what made Michael Thomas and is Part of what makes Michael Thomas such a very good wide receiver who quietly through two games, and it means nothing, is on pace for right at 1,000 yards. To be very clear, though, he's also the lowest in the NFL through two weeks in yards created through separation. So he's finding ways to win, but he still has things that he has to do to get better in terms of, like, more efficient. Because I don't expect a 30-year-old receiver just to become amazing again, but I still think that he can be a little bit better than what we've seen so far. But anyway, back to the play. Love the immediate recognition. Look how he sits, and that sit is quick. That wasn't a pitter, 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 patter. It was a quick, got to my spot, now we sit in it. I love this. And this is actually something that when we have zone fights, he's going to be a guy that I go to more often than not if I am Derek Carr. I think he's going to be very reliable in those scenarios, and then good, reliable catcher too. I mean, also, shout to Keyshawn Johnson and Mike Irvin, who like to tell people to catch with their bodies. Sometimes that can be useful like here. Sometimes that is actually good to catch with your body. Y'all have had to watch a lot of sports TV to get that joke. But anyway, there's a example of him being sudden and violent in a good way. All right, so now we're going to back it very similar to what we actually just saw in the first place. Similar idea and concept, short curls and flats, curl flats here. Now, I will say that based on what I told you before, remember I said that you want to go for the Short side of the field, or I'm sorry, the side that has the least amount of defenders. Well, one, two, right here, one, two. So now you've actually got a pretty even split, but you got to remember that they have this guy underneath. So now that would technically be your third, but he still goes to Michael Thomas's side. Now, the question that I would ask if I had P. Carmichael right here, or even Coach Curry, is do you have a specific matchup where if you saw this down low, you wanted to go to Michael Thomas? Because then it kind of makes sense. But I will say in terms of the stacking, it's a little bit against him. The reverse of that is you have Chris Olave. He's going to have a great out route here. But you do hear myself and Ross Jackson 
from Locked on Saints talk all the time about the worst route in the NFL to throw is the field side, so the side with the most amount of grass, the field side out route. It's the route that's the easiest to pick off, in my opinion. So you do have at the top of your screen Chris Olave, who will be wide open on the same route that Thomas is running, but maybe there's a matchup that made them go to the Thomas side. And as you can see, we got a three to two disadvantage in terms of numbers for the Saints at the top. It's straight one to one. So again, I'm curious if Carr had a matchup here that they were told, hey, we target this matchup. We very much trust in Michael Thomas and he does make this first down. So short little catch. But one thing about Michael Thomas has been creating first downs with his catches. And I think that is so, so important Yes, I want him to score touchdowns. Yes, I want this passing attack to start scoring touchdowns. But creating first downs, incredibly, incredibly important. Let's move on to the next play. Okay, so it's the meme. Everybody likes to say it, make fun of it. But real quick to solidify, hey, does Michael Thomas catch well in the route that he's known for? Now, I will be very clear. Michael Thomas' best route at his peak was the crossing pattern, which in my opinion is probably the most important passing route, individual route in the NFL today. But we still know that he's known as Slant Boy. That's the nickname that people have given him. And truth is, he dominates on those. But does he still look as Chris? So we're going to take a look at his plant foot here. How does that look? Which that one's quite strong. Does a good job to come in. Of course, great catch and then takes a hit. So not a lot to look at in this clip. But it is showing Michael Thomas doing one of the things that Michael Thomas is known for. And doing it well. And of course, getting it first down. 50% of his catches this year. First downs. All right. Here's another one. Now, everybody talks about him being slant boy, but here he is running a fade route to the outside. And even without great separation, great job high pointing the ball, great hands, comes down with it and catches it in bounds. Got his butt down and one, <laughs> one foot ain't enough, but two cheeks are plenty. So let's take a look at this one. So what you have, like I said, we're gonna have just a basic out route here. We're gonna fade it out to the outside or fade route, not out route. We'll go down to the outside. We're gonna try to take that outside leverage away and simply use our body to win. Now, again, this is not a fantastic job in terms of separation, but that was never his game. So let me be very clear. It wasn't like Michael Thomas would run a fade route in 2019 and had eight yards of separation. This is what you saw. Yeah, close contested catches battles were how Michael Thomas dominated. In fact, one of his most infamous catches, in my opinion, going back to his rookie season in 2016 against San Francisco 49ers, very similar catch and play to this. And this, I think, is seeing high-end Michael Thomas. Now, ignore the ref calling it complete. They did review this, and it was complete. But this is a Michael Thomas play that is classic Michael Thomas, which is a great sign if you're a Saints fan. Next, just watch it. Watch for yourself. So, again, I'll be very clear. I am not arguing that Michael Thomas is elite still. I do still think that he's really good, though, and that matters. And maybe he could even continue to get better as the season goes on. But here's another example of him understanding assignment and zone and little things that make him so good at it for a quarterback like Derek Carr. So this is a short sit route. This is a planned short route. They're bringing in that motion. They're going to try to attack the short zone. First off, he knows the spot, but look how he turns into it. He reads the DB, sees the DB playing off, and is now going to sit, but then fall up in towards the first down marker so watch this little move he does we talked about a rocker step i mentioned that earlier a rocker step when you're going for an out route a rocker step is where you go one foot two foot so we sell the inside and then we break so that we can here that's where your feet would land so we're going to sell that outside move come back inside so with here you see him kind of having a similar step drop here for this zone where he's going to sit scoot now when he makes this like rear scoot this little hop He's not actually going in the wrong direction. He's going the right direction, but he's now opened up a little bit more space for him in the route. And then the way that he's going to catch it, great throw here by Carr, putting on the inside, thus protecting him from the DB to his back, as well as allowing him to catch and fall upfield. So he ends up getting seven yards here. This is not an amazing pass, but you take seven yards on second down to get third and short. Why is that so important? Because third and short is a hell of a lot easier to complete than third and eight. It's one of the reasons that the Saints have done very good in their two games when it comes to converting third downs because a lot of them have been third and shorts. They've been doing it 45% of the time. Pretty good. Do you want that at 60? Who doesn't? But little things like that. Basic, very good play. You want to see more. But next up. All right, big one here. Missed opportunity. 
And this one, I'm going to go on Derek Carr. A couple of missed opportunities here. One, Michael Thomas on a corner route here. The read pre-snap is maybe that isn't the look. But after you see that post-snap safety rotate, I would be thinking that. But anyways, checking this side of the field. One thing about Michael Thomas is if you talk about where he's in the pecking order, some plays he's the number one read. He's Some plays he's the hot read. And then other times he's the last in the progression. Here he is the last in the progression. This is focusing on this right here. So they're reading these corners, these DBs. So you've got three routes, crossing pattern coming across. You're going to have this seam route by Olave, and we're pushing out. So remember, we talked about creating different level concepts. One thing I'll say about this one, if I'm Carr, yeah, I realize that they've rotated this safety down, right? That means you've got that single high look. But I'll be very clear. Look how open Carr is. At some point, you're like, yes, I agree. But when they've given you a 10-yard depth there for the safety and you're staring at it, I understand the middle of the field close as a concept, but this is a wide freaking window. So this is my first opportunity to scream at Derek Carr. Pull the trigger! What the hell? It's... What are you doing? I'm not saying it's even a touchdown, but that's a 20 yard throw. Even if the worst happens, I get it. Conceptually, when we look at cover three and cover one, we don't attack middle of the field. That's 10 freaking yards. Hit him. <laughs> what are you waiting on? <laughs> it, it, just to be very clear, look at the reverse cycle. Derek Carr stared at it. He sees it. Throw the football. Okay. Uh, but Derek Carr did have a good game today. This is a miss, though. That is just like. He progresses through everything and then gets the ball knocked down at the line of scrimmage trying to check it down to Taysom. Very clear on the Michael Thomas part of it. You also had a great job in route running by Michael Thomas. Let me explain that before it turns into nothing but Derek Carr pull the trigger. Okay, so what he's going to do, remember this look pre-snap is middle of the field open. So cover two is typically a middle of the field open look. So even with that, You've got this DB who is taking outside leverage. So when you have a DB that takes outside leverage and you have an out route, what you want to do is attack very strongly his inside shoulder and inside hip. You want to get him to commit in this direction. So Michael Thomas, in terms of route running, I love to see this. Look how he does it. So comes out, immediately fires off, no false step. Definitely attack that inside shoulder. Now does just a smidge of contact, not enough to be illegal. Get through. Bam. He's open. He now has outside leverage. He's created about two, two and a half yards of separation. He's there. So you should be able to recognize that that's a great job by Michael Thomas showing he's still there. But for my, I'm over here just staring at this Chris Olave one like, good golly, Miss Molly. What happened? Why? Gotta have a pull the trigger episode every now and then. I'm gonna watch it one more time with y'all just because, good Lord. It'll be very clear. Y'all better not get in the comments talking about Derek Carr sucks because Misses happen, and this is the second game with a new team because he had a pretty good game throughout. But oh, can't blame that one on pressure. That's definitely a miss. Like, oh, I realized the middle of the field closed. That's 10 yards. Run the football. Next play. Now, I've chosen to end this film today with the last play being a play that's not a Michael Thomas catch, and there's a reason for that. Because even though he's not top in the pecking order, we can still see if he's effective. Remember I talked about the best route he used to run in his eliteness when he was literally offensive player of the year was the crossing pattern? Watch him here. This is vintage Michael Thomas. And why I like it so much is timing. So why am I harping on timing? Because the opposite side here is the flanker in Chris Olave, who we know is a speed stud, but also a route stud. And this is the impressive catch he made. This is that one-handed, holy crap, Olave's on another level catch. But what's important is, if that had been covered, did Michael Thomas do exactly as the play is designed? The play is designed to, if this closes off, he's still cleared underneath, and that crossing pattern has to get there in time so that they can take advantage of the window that's created. It's um best way to describe it is the coverage is you're creating a vacuum with your routes here. You create a little vacuum where you're gonna suck up all the defenders up into this deep route, and if they do that, then you hit underneath. So it's a great idea. And in terms of execution, look how far he's going to have to get out there to get into that slipstream, if you will, 
right there. Bam. This is it. So he's on top. Ball's out going for Olave, and it's not the wrong choice. Remember, middle of the field, closed. This is a good read by Carr. Be very clear that one play you watch, I'm screaming pull the trigger, but this is still a good play. So he makes the right read here to go one-on-one -on -one and trust your guy in Chris Olave. Because in football, you need a first down. Sure, you can target deep. He had either option, by the way. He could have gone this direction as well. But I'm going for my number one guy, my best guy. And this is where, you know, I would get kind of frustrated with other quarterbacks because maybe they'll just try to hit whoever's open. No, go to your best guy. Don't always just go for the guy that you think is more open. Who's the best playmaker you got? And that's Chris Olave right now. But what's also important is what this route is designed to do. If this had dropped back and this had dropped back and was like a, we say we were in a cover two situation and this safety was actually over here, and then you have the other safety back here, then yeah, I would not want to throw for this window, and I would want to hit this right here. For the underneath to work, you'd have to have Michael Thomas showing good play speed, good depth, and the ability to get on top, and it's exactly what he does here. So the best route that he used to run, he's doing it well here. Gets here, flattens out, and then why is that important? Because that flatten out let him get in front, he now has got leverage over this DB, and this entire area underneath the lave is now prime for Michael Thomas to get a big 15, 20-yard crossing pattern. I still love the call here because you see Chris Olave on your screen asking for the football, and he is smothered. Trust your playmakers. I love that Derek Carr made this pass, and I absolutely love that Chris Olave pulled it off and love that Michael Thomas is the first one to come congratulate him. So sure, Michael Thomas might be, not be the number one receiver on the team in terms of most catches, most playmaking, but he's still playing at a great level for the team two weeks in. Hope it continues. So here's my recap of Michael Thomas through two weeks. It's possible he still has some rust on him when it comes to that ankle. And maybe it's not 100% there. Maybe it gets better the more he gets into playing at NFL speed, NFL levels. But he's still doing some things at an elite level. His route running and zone understanding are still really high up there in terms of how other receivers play the game. Compared to his peers, he still understands zone and attacking zones, his routes, and has great hands better than most receivers in the league. So sure, he's not creating a ton of separation on some of his routes. And as I showed in some of these plays, you'll see that ankle looking primo on some snaps and then other snaps just not as strong. And that comes and goes. It's the same thing we saw in training camp in preseason. But what I can say is if he stays healthy, the two weeks of what you've seen from Michael Thomas is certainly a great impact. It's exactly what I was hoping for. About an 80 to 90% Michael Thomas. It's not where he was to be Offensive Player of the Year. But man, it's really nice to see that he is still an effective target. And even Dennis Allen has talked really highly of how good he has looked to start. And the hope is he only gets better as he gets more comfortable on that ankle. But I'm what you think in our Discord in the comment section down below. Join if you haven't already. Link is in the description of this video. If you want to help out the channel, please head over to RevDeuce.com. You can support us monthly or just pick you up some merch. That way I can do more stuff like this for you and hopefully you enjoyed it. I know a lot of y'all have asked for more of like the breaking down individual plays. So I tried to include that in this one. Who dat, God bless. Thank you, every single one of you, for helping this channel and being around and being part of our Who Dat family. Catch you on the next film study.